Hello everyone, today I'm going to tell you a little bit about wireless power transfer and also I'm going to show you a project uh, which you can build easily and it won't cost you much. Nowadays we hear a lot about wireless power transfer that uh, if you uh, wish to charge your electric vehicle just uh, park in a designated spot and it will receive the power to charge the battery easily wirelessly and uh, for uh, cell phones we can see in the market it is wireless chargers are already available for some years and in the near future we can see we'll be able to see that your other household devices like TVs laptops will be wirelessly powered so here I am going to show you the project which uh, consists of two coils so one is called the primary coil it is driven by electronic circuit and another coil it is called the receiver coil it receives the power and uh, I'm going to explain how it works and uh, to, uh, as the separation between the two coils is increased the efficiency drops but the thing is uh, a circuit phenomenon called the resonance is used to make the power transfer more efficient. There are two main ways electrical power can be wirelessly transferred. One is called the radiative and other one is called non-radiative one. Today I will only discuss the non-radiative one this method is finding wider applications nowadays. This method consists of two coils. One coil is driven by AC voltage and the other nearby coil, the receiver coil, receives the power. These two coils are said to be magnetically coupled. Wireless power transfer is getting a lot of attention in EV charging. No plug-in is required. A car can park in a designated spot. Underneath, a primary coil is located. The car will have a receiver coil under its chassis. We are getting a lot of uh, wireless power applications in cell phone charging nowadays. And we will be able to see these are powering other devices like laptops and TVs, etc. And in medical science, people are doing a lot of tests powering the and charging the body implants like pacemakers. There are many more unforeseen applications of wireless power transfer are coming in the near future. The basic principle of wireless power transfer is simple and follows the century old physics of electromagnetic induction discovered by Michael Faraday. When a coil is connected with an AC voltage source, an alternating time varying magnetic field is created around this coil. If the second coil is placed nearby, some of the field intersects with this coil and a voltage is induced in the second coil as well. And this method of power transfer is called inductive power transfer or IPT in short. Now, if the two coils are in close proximity, more magnetic fields uh, are intersecting, interacting with the second coil and the power transfer becomes more efficient. Uh, if the separation between the coils is increased, very few magnetic lines of force are coupling the uh, secondary coil and the power transfer becomes poorer. In transformers, the two coils, which are called primary and the secondary coils, are wound on an iron core. The core confines the generated magnetic field within its volume. So almost all of the magnetic field uh, is linked to the secondary coil. This is why the power transfer becomes 95 to 99% efficient. In this case, we call the coils are strongly coupled. 
there is a term coupling coefficient or k is used which is a measure of how well the two coils are coupled k equals once means one means these are strongly coupled and k equals zero means there is no coupling at all what we learned so far if the two coils are in close proximity the coupling is better and the power transfer is more efficient and longer the distance the weaker the coupling and power transfer becomes weaker each coil has its uh, own self inductance which is usually expressed with l when two coils are located close to each other they are magnetically coupled and additional inductance comes to play which is called mutual inductance and is expressed with m m is related to the individual inductances l1 l2 by this relationship and where k is called the coupling coefficient and k varies from 1 to 0 as we have seen as the separation between the coils increases power transfer efficiency decreases there is another circuit phenomenon that we can utilize to improve the situation in case of uh, increased separation that is using the resonance now if we connect two capacitors one in the primary side and one in the secondary side and uh, we choose a frequency at which the two coils resonate the situation improves and which i'm going to explain uh, let us consider first what happens to the primary side both the capacitors and inductors resist uh, electrical current and the behavior is termed as reactances inductive reactance is expressed by xl equals twice by fl and capacitive reactance xc equals 1 by twice by fc so xl increases with frequency and xc decreases with frequency now let us see what happens uh, if we start increasing the frequency from very low to high so at some certain frequency we will be able to see that inductive reactance equals the capacitive reactance xl equals xc when this thing happens the two reactances cancel each other and the current is can be expressed by i equals v by r r is the overall circuit resistance which can be very high if we reduce the resistance r Now higher current in the primary circuit creates higher magnetic flux. If the receiver circuit is also tuned at the same resonant frequency as that of the primary side, due to the lower impedance, higher load current can be expected. Now we know the basic principle of wireless power transfer and how to make it more efficient. To build a practical wireless power transfer system, we need the following two coils, two capacitors, a DC source, and electronic circuit to convert DC to AC with frequency tuning and a load. Uh, this slide shows how we can convert DC to AC using two switches S1 and S2. If S1 closes and S2 open, current starts flowing into the LC or inductor capacitor circuit. When S1 is opened and S2 is closed, then the stored energy in the capacitors starts discharging, but this time in the opposite direction. So this is how uh, alternating current is created in the LC circuit. Uh, this is the schematic diagram of the practical circuit that I tried. Two MOSFETs are used as electronic switches. This IC has a built-in oscillator with a frequency tuning option using a variable resistor RV1. 
it can also drive two MOSFETs. As we change the resistor RV1, the frequency changes and the frequency variation follows this equation. Uh, this slide shows the tuning characteristics of the oscillator circuit. My plan is to adjust the frequency around 22 kilohertz. Later, it will be explained that uh, this is the uh, resonant frequency uh, that is set for our uh, power transfer circuit. Now we have to consider choice of frequency of operation of our wireless power transfer circuit. There are frequency bands which are allowed to use. For instance, 10 to 200 kilohertz and then a big gap 6.765 to 6.795 megahertz then 13.553 to 13.567 megahertz and there are some higher frequency bands so we are going to use the most popular band that is 10 kilohertz to 200 kilohertz uh, range uh, this is the complete a schematic which includes the primary and the secondary uh, side. Uh, this is the bridge rectifier circuit uh, to be used with the secondary uh, to convert from AC to DC. Uh, to make two coils, I bought a pipe coupler from local hardware store. The diameter is 13 centimeter. I cut two pieces, each two centimeter wide. And uh, I used uh, AWG uh, uh, 18 wire and used 25 turns for each of the coils. Uh, these are some photos of the co coils. Uh, though the calculated inductance of the coils uh, is 153 microhenry, I measured with an LCR meter and uh, it shows 155 microhenry. I also used a capacitor of 0.33 microfarad on the primary and the secondary side. So the resonant frequency FR becomes this and I, which is 22.25 kilohertz. I also tried to measure the coupling coefficient with distance for the pair of coils. It is not essential to measure the uh, and uh, to make the project. Just out of curiosity, I did that. If you are interested, you can do that as well. Uh, this is the result I got, variation of coupling coefficient with the separation. Uh, this is the practical circuit on a PCB, two MOSFETs with heatsink. And uh, this is the capacitor, 0.33 microfarad. And this is the uh, main IC which is driving the two MOSFETs. And uh, for the tuning of the uh, oscillator circuit, uh, this is the potentiometer. Uh, this is the photo of the whole experimental setup, the circuit board, two coils and a load. And this is the capacitor on the receiving side. And this is the capacitor on the primary side. Uh, this is another photo, the circuit in action. Uh, oscilloscope waveforms are shown. One just before the capacitor, pure square wave is shown here, applied to the LC circuit. And here, after the capacitor, uh, it becomes almost sinusoidal. Uh, this is the bridge rectified circuit that I used to convert AC to, into DC on the secondary side. Uh, the bridge rectifier is seen to connect it, seen to be connected on the secondary side. In future, I have a plan to make some videos on the following subjects. How the voltage varies with the load, how to regulate the wirelessly transferred power, and how to utilize the wirelessly transferred power. Uh, the experimental setup is shown here. The switch is on. And as you can see on the secondary side, a 12 volt lamp is connected and that is glowing. I am increasing the separation and you can see that the intensity of the light is going down. 
and then again by decreasing the separation uh, the power transfer becomes more efficient now I am trying to change the frequency and you can see that as it is not tuned exactly at the resonant frequency the power drops <coughs> So again it is tuned back to resonance. Now I am showing the waveform. Uh, this is the waveform uh, square wave applied to the uh, LC circuit. And I am going to show you the waveform at the other side of the capacitor this is almost like a sinusoidal AC so pulsed AC converted to sinusoidal AC it, at the at resonance the peak becomes high here is the circuit and the oscilloscope probe is connected on the other side of the cap now I'm changing the frequency you can see the amplitude is going down and up and exit and comes back to the resonant position and the lamp grows brighter Now I connected the bridge rectifier at the secondary side and after that the load is connected. Uh, here is the rectifier circuit, four short key diodes and a small capacitor at the output. And here is the voltage across this lamp that is 6.15. Now I connected the oscilloscope at the uh, output of the secondary coil before it is rectified. That is, we are seeing now the alternating uh, current. And if I change the frequency, you can also see the change in amplitude. Now I am uh, increasing the separation as the separation increases the amplitude goes down a little now uh, oscilloscope is connected uh, at the output side of the rectifier we should be able to see the DC nature uh, here is the on the scope screen you can see DC but it is not fully rectified so it needs additional capacitor uh, to make it a better uh, DC you can see AC superimposed on DC uh, 